Hello, welcome to lecture 5 of module 3. This is lecture number 26 of the course. In this lecture, we will continue our discussion on classical regime. Then we will start discussing the so-called quantum regime. But before that, uh, we have to understand quantum noise as quantum noise distinguishes the classical regime. In fact, to appreciate quantum noise better, we have to understand classical noise first. So we'll have a discussion on the on classical uh, noise in terms of the so-called classical Langevin equation. So let us begin. In the last class, we started discussing the classical regime of KVT quantum optomechanics with the goal that it will later on help us in understanding the quantum regime better. In the classical limit, we replace the position operator x cap by the corresponding classical variable x while the light field uh, which is represented in the quantum regime by the annihilation operator a cap it is replaced by the coherent state alpha which is the most classical state of an harmonic oscillator and we all know that in the quantum regime the light which is an electromagnetic field behaves like a harmonic oscillator the equation of motion will be in the form of x and alpha and uh, we have written two equations for one for mechanics and other for the light mode the mechanics is modeled by the mechanical oscillator is considered to be a damped harmonic oscillator and it is acted on by the uh, radiation pressure force okay and the light mode is represented by this equation which i uh, explained uh, in the last class as you can see that the first term on the right hand side of, the, of this equation this particular term takes into account how the light field is coupled to mechanics the second term refers to decay of the amplitude of the uh, photon and the third term takes the laser drive into account and where omega l is the laser frequency the parameter alpha max here it indicates the fact that the value of alpha will settle down to the value of alpha max at resonance so then we uh, got rid of the time dependence in this light mode equation by going over to the laser frame uh, rotating laser frame and this is what the transformation we made after making the transformation we get an equation with a new uh, light variable but for convenience we again uh, represent the new light variable by alpha okay and then it resulted in this uh, equation of motion for the light field then we define the detuning parameter as the difference between the laser frequency and the resonance frequency of the cavity and we get an equation for the light mode and as we analyze it uh, that in the steady state when there is no coupling to the mechanics then it turns out that indeed in the steady state where alpha takes the value of alpha bar it actually at resonance take the value of alpha max as we uh, described and this is the intensity plot versus the uh, detuning parameter at uh, uh, in the steady state and we can see that the this spectrum here has this full width at half maxima is given by this cavity decay rate kappa then uh, we try to solve these uh, two equations uh, for the steady state and we have uh, linearized it around the steady state and to do that actually we assume that the coupling between the system and the butt is weak and here by system we meant the mechanical system the mechanics the harmonic oscillator uh, the mechanical harmonic oscillator and by the butt we mean the op driven optical cavity okay so basically the mechanical system is emo is actually surrounded by the optical field and which is considered to be the bath and the coupling is considered to be weak and in that uh, in that case we take that uh, the value of alpha is uh, 
slightly deviated from the steady state value by delta alpha while the mechanics uh, the displacement of the uh, movable mirror is uh, displaced from its uh, steady state by an amount delta xt you can consider them as the fluctuation also and the next uh, we have taken certain step to solve it first we solve it for the steady state uh, and then we look for the first order parts of the equation of motion now assuming that already we know what is the steady state value alpha bar and the uh, x bar we solve this uh, equation of motion uh, and then we just put uh, x by replaced x by x bar plus delta x and alpha by alpha bar plus delta alpha and we obtain the equations for the fluctuations corresponding fluctuations for the mechanics as well as the uh, light mode light field and we analyzed it and eliminating the idea was to eliminate the light field dynamics and then plug the solutions into the equation of motion for the mechanics and uh, we have done that of course our the idea was to uh, see the response of the mechanical system to an external force so therefore uh, in addition to the radiation pressure force we have added an external term extra force term here because we are interested to know uh, how the mechanical system is responding to this external force f here and then going over to the frequency domain we discuss all these things in detail in the last class we solved uh, we got the expression for the fluctuating field for the light field and we in the process we defined a quantity called the cavity susceptibility by this parameter and uh, which basically gives us the response of the or basically shows us how the light field is getting modified due to the interaction with the mechanics and the equation of motion for the mechanics is here it is written like here and then we replace the quantity delta alpha and delta alpha star which is the complex conjugate of delta alpha we put it here and eventually after using this Fourier transform relations we obtain an expression for delta x the this is basically the response of the mechanical system or the fluctuating quantity and we were able to write it uh, in terms of a very compact equation and we have defined a parameter uh, called k of omega and uh, what it basically shows is that because of the presence of the uh, interaction between the mechanics and the light the, the mechanical susceptibility of the harmonic oscillator mechanical harmonic oscillator is getting getting modified so therefore we are having an effective susceptibility parameter then the next uh, we went on to understand what is the meaning of this extra parameter and it turns out that uh, our analysis finally showed us showed that the real part of the this susceptibility parameter is basically or this k of omega is related to the frequency shift of the mechanical extra frequency shift of the mechanical oscillator and the imaginary part of this term k of omega around the resonance frequency of the harmonic oscillator or the mechanical oscillator is related to the extra damping that is of, uh, suffered by the mechanical oscillator so now what we are going to do we are going to analyze this term k of omega in somewhat details and then we will be able to extract certain quantitative information about the mechanical system here chi c that is the susceptibility cavity susceptibility and it is given by chi c of omega is equal to 1 divided by minus i omega minus i delta bar plus kappa by 2 where delta bar this is the modified detuning parameter and this is actually equal to delta plus omega optical by l and x bar this is a very small quantity so in many cases we may assume delta bar to be nearly equal to delta only we can define another parameter which will simplify the calculation that is called the uh, optomechanical coupling 
linearized rather because we are now in the linearized domain so this is called linearized optomechanical coupling strand optomechanical coupling strand coupling strand and you will see that this is going to be a very very important parameter and this is defined as z square is equal to h cross divided by twice m capital omega omega optical by l whole square then mod alpha square this is what is z square so using this parameter z optomechanical coupling linearized optomechanical coupling strand we can rewrite the expression for this capital k omega as follows that would be i into twice m omega z square chi c cavity susceptibility parameter evaluated at frequency omega minus its complex conjugate evaluated at frequency minus omega okay now we can put the value of chi c and its complex conjugate evaluated at minus omega from this expression and then we can find out from here we can find out the real part of because this is a complex quantity we can find the real part of k of omega and imaginary part of k of omega a simple straightforward algebra we can uh, do and if we do that then you recall that this uh, gamma optical that means the optomechanical damping term that we obtained was this it is related to the imaginary part of k of omega and this was given by 1 by m of omega into imaginary part of this quantity k evaluated at the resonance frequency of the oscillator capital omega and if we do the algebra in fact uh, it's very straightforward to see from this expression that this is going to be equal to twice of z square and then it would be the real part because this is imaginary quantity is there so we have to take the real part of this so this would be real part of chi of c of omega minus chi of c susceptibility complex con complex conjugate of susceptibility evaluated at minus omega in fact of course we have to take omega is equal to capital omega if we do that and this this simple algebra i urge you to do it otherwise we'll do it in the problem solving session you will get the expression for optomechanical damping parameter as this one this would be z square kappa and a very nice expression you will get by simple algebra you will get it would be omega plus delta bar whole square plus kappa by 2 whole square and there be another term that would be minus 1 divided by capital omega minus delta bar whole square plus kappa by 2 whole square so this is the expression for optomechanical damping now we can plot this parameter as a function of the modified detuning parameter delta bar and if we plot it we are going to get a plot like this so you can actually use a computer and some parameter but typically the plot will look like this so on the x-axis it is delta bar and here we have gamma optical there is a damping parameter so the plot will be something like this it will be somewhat like this okay all right this is actually symmetric in a way anti-symmetric here okay this is what we are going to get and this p could be at uh, minus omega and here it would be at plus omega and the full width at half maxima so we are getting basically two peaks uh, one is uh, in the upward direction other is in the downward direction as you can see and this full width at half maximum is given by this kappa okay so we are getting sharp peak 
and this is the plot when this cavity uh, decay rate kappa is much much smaller than the resonance frequency of the oscillator on the other hand if uh, say kappa is much much greater than the resonance frequency then you are going to get a, a plot something like this so you will get this is for this particular one is when this kb the decay rate is much much larger than the resonance frequency so we'll get the dotted one for kappa much much larger than the resonance frequency omega and we will get very sharp peak for kappa much much less than the um, resonance frequency omega now let me explain uh, what it physically mean and these two plots uh, particularly this one is very important for us uh, kappa much much smaller than omega you can see that it is very clear that uh, i'm going to discuss the case kappa much much less than omega here if you see from this plot that for delta bar is equal to minus omega uh, we have positive damping so here you as you can see this gamma optomechanical damping this is greater than zero so who is effectively means that we are going to get cooling the mechanical oscillator will get cooled when the detuning parameter when we can have delta bar is equal to minus omega okay on the other hand uh in the uh, in this in this uh, regime here for so we'll get cooling for delta is equal to minus omega and for delta bar is equal to plus omega uh, so here this one we are going to get heating because we have negative detuning because gamma optical that is your negative damping that mean, so this here we'll have uh, heating the mechanical oscillator will get heated up and on the other hand here we are going to get the cooling effect okay now let me let us understand it actually what's going on it's very simple because if we uh, come up with say delta our laser frequency laser has a frequency such that our delta rather than delta bar let me just take delta because the correction is very small so if say delta is equal to minus omega uh, then it means because delta you know that is equal to uh, the difference between the laser frequency and the resonance frequency of the cavity so that would be omega optical minus capital omega so if the laser frequency is such that this is uh, you know less than the this is less than the resonance frequency of the cavity so in that case quite clearly the laser light uh, cannot enter into the cavity because it is not satisfying the resonance condition it will go here and it will hit the front mirror and then it will get reflected uh, however what happens is that if suppose there are some kind of vibration is there that means some phonons are there uh, in the in the say it is a cantilever so the light field then can this light field can absorb a phonon and thereby so in that case you see if uh, we'll have omega optical is equal to the laser frequency is omega l then if it can extract one phonon from the cantilever then this laser light will be able to enter into the cavity and the laser frequency will be enhanced so therefore the photon that is entering into the cavity will be now blue shifted as it has gained energy from the mechanical oscillator resulting in cooling of the cantilever on the other hand when we have this delta is equal to plus omega you can do the similar analysis then photon will be able to enter into the cavity if it uh, dump extra energy because you see it is plus omega then your omega l is equal to omega optical plus omega that means now if the resonance condition has to be satisfied then 
the phonon has to dump this the laser light that is impinging on the front mirror has to dump this extra energy and if it dumps the extra energy to the cantilever then it will be able to enter into the cavity and circulating light will be uh, there inside the cavity and in the process the mechanical oscillator will get heated up and the phonon will now become red shifted in frequency so one thing uh, you should i forgot to tell please note that this domain when kappa is much much less than omega in this case uh, we can have two sharp peaks and we can uh, you know these peaks can be resolved and this is known as the resolved sideband limit so this is very important so the domain when kappa is much much less than omega this is popularly known as resolve sideband sideband limit and in most uh, optomechanical system generally people work in this uh, limit uh, because it's very useful for applications now let us discuss about the implication of the real part of k omega as pointed out earlier it is related to the frequency shift of the mechanical oscillator so we saw earlier this expression that frequency shift delta omega is equal to minus 1 by twice m omega omega here is the resonance frequency and it is real part of k evaluated at the resonance frequency so this is basically we know as the optical spring effect optical spring effect now plugging the value of k of omega uh, we can get these expressions very easily because k of omega which we have written earlier here uh, from this expression you see you will have if you put that here delta omega will be equal to minus z square and this would be imaginary part of chi of c uh, cavity susceptibility evaluated at plus cap omega capital omega then minus of its complex conjugate evaluated at negative of this capital omega the resonance frequency you can easily work out the details uh, doing the straightforward algebra and then it is uh, possible to get a typical plot for the frequency shift delta omega as a function of the detuning parameter delta bar let me just uh, draw it here for various cases so this is my delta omega the frequency shift versus delta bar now uh, in the regime when the cavity decay rate kappa is much much larger than omega the resonance frequency the plot will be will look like this it would be anti-symmetric and it would be something like this so you will have here it is for plus omega and this would be for minus omega and here i am plotting it for the case when kappa is much larger than capital omega the resonance frequency now as you can see uh, from this plot two things is clear one is that this is anti-symmetric and the uh, shift in the frequency shift in the frequency is positive that is greater than zero when our this detuning parameter uh, delta bar is greater than zero on the other hand this delta omega the frequency shift is negative when we have this detuning parameter is negative and this is for the case when uh, we are in the unresolved sideband regime right because as i said here that kappa less than much much less than omega is the so-called resolved sideband regime and this is the opposite of that regime now physically what it means is that that the mechanical spring in this case as you see here delta omega here delta omega is greater than zero so therefore the mechanical spring uh, the spring constant is now enhanced so therefore the spring is getting 
stiffer or harder due to the light induced effect on the other hand for delta bar less than 0 in this regime the the frequency shift is negative so therefore the spring constant is getting reduced that means the spring is getting softer as delta omega is less than zero okay and it has certain uh, issues uh, because of this as regards the cooling is concerned because we already know that for optomechanical cooling we work in the regime delta less uh, this negative detuning right delta less than zero okay just let me again remind you yes this is the regime here you see we work in the regime where delta bar is less than zero and we get the cooling effect so if we are interested in cooling and if we want to cool the mechanical spring harder then the spring as a result of because this delta omega uh, this frequency shift will also increase if we increase the intensity of the laser and because of that the spring will get more softer and this is actually going to lead into the instability uh, so this is not a good thing but this issue can be circumvented or avoided if we go over to the resolved sideband regime that is when we have kappa is say much much less than the resonance frequency and in this case the plot is little bit uh, slightly complicated but uh, still let me try to plot it so this would be something like this uh, it will be again here let me draw it here it would be anti-symmetric and you will have a peak here and it will pass through it there will be almost kind of a singularity here and it will be like this okay something like this so here you see that we can see uh, we can source this resonance frequency here delta in this case we can choose the detuning parameter exactly at the resonance frequency here at the negative of the resonance frequency and when then the cooling will be in this case strong at the same time we will be able to avoid the softening of the spring uh, and we will no longer have sp uh, the optical spring effect here so in fact uh, that's the reason or the motivation behind working in the regime of resolved sideband regime and this is experimentally speaking or practically it is a uh, it's a very uh, good regime only issue is that because your kappa has to be much much smaller so therefore you really need a very uh, good quality factor a very high quality factor uh, cavity the all these effects have been actually experimentally validated this is some experiment that was done in the year 2008 by a group uh, by tufel group uh, and here you see by the way in this plot here this omega m refers to our capital omega the resonance frequency and this omega here refers to delta omega and this gamma refers to our symbol gamma and this is the cooling effect as we see this is for the cooling and heating part cooling and heating effect this is your uh, heating effect and this is the cooling effect and red dots are the experimental uh, data and uh, this solid curve solid curve is from the theory and as you see the experiment and the theory matches pretty well on the other hand in this figure here is that this is the frequency shift versus the detuning parameter and here also you see the red one refers to the experimental data and the solid curve refers to the theoretical this thing theoretical uh, plot and both of them matches pretty well and uh, whatever we discussed uh, uh, this feature is as you can see uh, and this is actually done in the resolved sideband regime and uh, experiment and theory matches pretty well here now we are almost ready to discuss quantum regime the quantum regime is particularly different from classical regime due to the so-called quantum noise the quantum noise is generally uh, discussed by the so-called 
কোয়ান্টাম লেনজেভিন ইকুয়েশনস কোয়ান্টাম লেনজেভিন ইকুয়েশনস অ্যান্ড নোয়িং দিস কোয়ান্টাম লেনজেভিন ইকুয়েশনস ইজ গোয়িং টু বি ভেরি ইউজফুল ফর আস ইনফ্যাক্ট টু অ্যাপ্রিসিয়েট কোয়ান্টাম লেনজেভিন ইকুয়েশন লেট আস ফার্স্ট ডিসকাস দ্য ক্লাসিক্যাল লেনজেভিন ইকুয়েশন অ্যান্ড টু ডু দ্যাট উইল বিগিন উইথ দ্য আওয়ার এজ অল ক্লাসিক্যাল হারমোনিক অসিলেটার অ্যান্ড এজ ইউ রিকল দ্যাট উই রিপ্রেজেন্টেড এ ক্লাসিক্যাল হারমোনিক অসিলেটার বাই দ্য ড্যামড হারমোনিক অসিলেটার মডেল অ্যান্ড উই ড্যামড হারমোনিক অসিলেটার হিয়ার আই এম গোয়িং টু ডিসকাস ওয়ান্স এগেইন ক্লাসিক্যাল ড্যামড হারমোনিক অসিলেটার অ্যান্ড উইল সি দ্য শর্ট কামিংস অফ দ্য ইউজুয়াল মডেল দ্য ইকুয়েশন অফ মোশন ফর দ্য ড্যামড হারমোনিক অসিলেটার ইজ দিস এম কিউ ডাবল ডট প্লাস এম গামা এম কিউ ডট দিস ইজ দ্য ডিজিপেশন টার্ম এন্ড উই হ্যাভ এম ওমেগা এম স্কোয়ার কিউ ইজ ইকুয়াল টু জিরো জাস্ট এ কোশ্চন হিয়ার হিয়ার গামা এম ইজ দ্য সেম এস গামা দ্যাট জাস্ট উই হ্যাভ শর্ট ওয়েল ব্যাক উই টুক এন্ড ওমেগা এম ইজ দ্য সেম এস দিস রেজোনেন্স ফ্রিকুয়েন্সি ওমেগা ফর দ্য মেকানিক্যাল অসিলেটার এন্ড দিস কিউ ইজ বেসিক্যালি দ্য সেম এস এক্স দ্য কোয়ডিনেট অফ দ্য মেকানিক্যাল অসিলেটার সো ইউজুয়ালি দিস ইজ দ্য ডেপড হারমোনিক অসিলেটার ইকুয়েশন এন্ড ইন মোস্ট সিটুয়েশন ইটস অল রাইট বাট দেয়ার ইজ এ ফান্ডামেন্টাল প্রবলেম উইথ দিস ইকুয়েশন বিকজ দিস ইকুয়েশন ইজ ইট ইজ নট নট টাইম ইনভেরিয়েন্ট so not time invariant and by this i mean that when you go from t to minus t then this equation would become m q double dot minus m gamma m q dot plus m omega m square q is equal to zero you see Uh, this is because q double dot is d2 q dt2 so under time reversal it will remain the same but q dot will change its signs because q dot is equal to dq dt so if t goes to minus t q dot would become minus q dot and that's why this is what we are having so physically what it mean is this that uh, transfer of energy this implies because it is not time invariant so transfer of energy is uh, taking place transfer of energy is always from the oscillator from the oscillator to the environment to the environment and the reverse process never occurs and also you see here in this equation of motion for the damped harmonic oscillator all the variables are in terms of the uh, harmonic oscillator only but it is generally it interacts with the surrounding and there is not a single variable apart from this gamma m which connects the dissipation of the oscillator uh, but there is no uh, connection to the surrounding variables and so on so therefore this equation is uh, actually it's not correct uh, in strict sense because also you can see it from the solution of the equation that solution of this uh, let me write the solution and maybe you have uh, already you you must have studied in your undergraduate solution of damped harmonic oscillator it's very easy to verify if you can put this solution you can check it that this solution satisfy the damped harmonic oscillator equation so solution is like this say q of t is equal to some constant the amplitude a e to the power minus gamma m t by 2 and you have sin omega m dash t plus a constant this is phase of the oscillator and omega m this is the shifted frequency and omega m this is equal to because of dissipation you have omega m square minus gamma m square by 4 okay so 
by this you see the amplitude is of the oscillator is getting uh, decreased as time goes on so this solution says that for any initial conditions the displacement of the oscillator eventually decays to zero however such behavior does not represent realistically the situation when the oscillator is in thermal equilibrium with surrounding at a non-zero temperature say our this system is there and this system is surrounded by the environment thermal environment thermal environment means the, it has some temperature t not equal to zero and here uh, by this the system in our case is the harmonic oscillator now if it is interacting with the environment and at thermal equilibrium the system is also going to have some temperature so there is definitely going to be the uh, displacement so as time goes on this qt cannot go to zero actually that's what the solution says but in reality that is not the case if it is in thermal uh, equilibrium there would be always some kind of a displacement so how to uh, address this realistic case and to model the realistic situation that means to take inter the thermal environment into account what is considered is this that okay the system is interacting with the with the environment or the surrounding let me say this called environment or it is also termed as but okay it is called but or environment this and this but is modeled as a collection of infinite number of independent harmonic oscillators so this bath is actually considered to be that as if this system is interacting with a lot of harmonic oscillator like this uh, these are independent harmonic oscillator so and it is going to be model like this so I'll, I'll show you how this is done this is what is uh, uh, we are going to now consider that this bath is a collection of n independent harmonic oscillator and the Hamiltonian for the system plus bath uh, can be written as follows so let me write down the Hamiltonian first Hamiltonian for system plus bath so we are why we are doing it we are actually doing it so that we can have a realistic model of the interaction of the system with the environment and the hamiltonian would be like this say first of all the hamiltonian this part i'm going to write it for the system so this is the kinetic energy let me consider the harmonic oscillator to be a single harmonic oscillator so its momentum is p mass is m and you have half m omega m square q square so this is the uh, potential energy part and the environment is now or the bath is considered to be a collection of n harmonic oscillator let us say and this would be all the oscillators has different momentum and different masses and all of them are independent so we have this sum of all this here m i omega i square q i square and this is the bath part of the hamiltonian so let us say edge bath and this is uh, we have the system which is our harmonic system harmonic oscillator and the system and the bath is uh, interacting with each other and the interaction is uh, taken into account by this uh, uh, part here q is the system parameter and the bath parameter is there are n oscillators and corresponding to these n oscillators there are q i number of coordinates so various coordinates are there so system coordinate is getting coupled to the bath coordinates and ci is the corresponding coupling between one particular bath variable uh, qi and system variable q and there is an additional term that is added to these things just to take into account the uh, 
uh, or the cancel the shift in frequency of the system oscillator you see frequencies associated with this q square so this particular term is just added for convenient purpose so that it can cancel the shift in frequency of the system oscillator when it is interacting with the environment so this is uh, what is done so we have a term like this okay now from this hamiltonian we can write down the first order differential equations for the bath and the system variable so you recall that the equation of motion we can write in terms of the hamiltonian like this say q dot j is equal to del h del p j and we have p j dot that is equal to minus del h del q j okay so using this we can write the equations for the system let me first write it for the system variable that would be q dot is equal to p by m and p dot is equal to you can easily verify it p dot is equal to minus m omega m square q plus summation i is equal to 1 to l c i q i and we'll have minus q summation i is equal to 1 to n okay let me uh, let me take this here okay okay let me write this part uh, separately to avoid confusion so i have minus q summation i is equal to 1 to n you can i urge you to verify it whether we are writing it correctly or not you can check it so this is what one equation let me name this equation as or let us first let us say this is equation number one let me make it equation number two this is equation number say three in fact uh, combining these two equations rather i can write it uh, this as m q double dot p dot it would be equal to m q double dot right from here i can write p dot as m q double dot and do this, this would be m q double dot plus m omega m square q plus q summation c i square by m i omega i square i is equal to 1 to n and you have minus summation i is equal to 1 to n c i q i is equal to 0 so let us say this is my equation number 4 this is going to be a very important equation we are going to come back to this equation a little bit later and these are for the system and for but for but i have the equation as q i dot is equal to p i by m m i i think yes and then we have p i dot is equal to minus m i omega i square q i plus c i q let us say this is my equation number five this is my equation number six so these are for the bath variables now solution to the bath equation this bath equations uh, can be easily written in terms of the initial bath variable say q i of zero and p i of zero are the initial bath variables initial but variables position and the momentum let us say at time t is equal to zero we have qi zero and at time t is equal to zero we have momentum as pi zero suppose we know all these initial but variables then the solution can be written like this so this is also you can verify just by directly putting it in the equations so let me write down the solution here so we'll have qi of zero and we can have cos omega i t plus p i 0 by m i omega i 
uh, you may find it very difficult but actually it is not difficult this is a straightforward algebra only people do but i think uh, my motivation here or intention here is to do the things in details uh, so that you can see the whole picture okay let me do it and you have c i m i uh, omega i integration 0 to t dt dash sin omega i t minus t dash and then you have q t dash let me say this is equation number seven okay now i want to uh, do one thing i want to put this uh, equation number seven in equation number four because i'm interested in knowing what's going on with the system i have this system equation here so putting this equation so putting putting equation 7 7 in equation 4 okay uh, let me write it down you can actually take a pen and paper and do it yourself and you can verify it and let me just write down the whole thing here uh, this would be m q double dot plus m omega m square q minus i is equal to 1 to l c i square m i omega i okay and integration 0 to t and i will have uh, dt dash sin omega i t minus t dash q of t this plus q don't worry it looks very uh, uh, difficult but uh, intimidating but actually it's uh, we are going to simplify it and we'll write a very simple expression at the end and you will see that m i omega i square and that is equal to on the right hand side i will have i is equal to 1 to l ci and you'll have qi at 0 cos omega i t plus pi 0 divided by m i omega i and i have sine omega i t okay so now let's say this is my equation number 8 in fact uh, here you see this particular term this third term in equation 8 on the left hand side this can be simplified by using integration by parts and if we do that you, you let uh, if we simplify it and put it in the equation uh, 8 after simplification that is very straightforward and then if we do that I can write this equation number 8 as follows that would be m q double dot plus m omega m square q now the third term is simplified so I will have i is equal to 1 to n uh, c i square m i omega i square integration 0 to t dt dash q dot t dash cos omega i t minus t dash okay and here i have on the right hand side i have i is equal to 1 to n c i i think the same expression uh, i'm putting here i will have q i 0 minus c i by m i omega i square q of 0 and this term actually coming after simplification with the third term and we have here cos omega i t okay and we'll also have uh, this term one minute we'll have this term this is what i'll have plus pi of zero by m i omega i sin omega i t okay i am doing the things in pretty details but uh, uh, 
eventually we'll see uh, it be it, we will simplify it uh, further just by using some notation now the right hand side of this equation is this equation is important this right hand side of this equation is due to the bad variables primarily you see and uh, it has the dimension of force because mq double dot right that is force and this term on the right hand side of this equation has a dimension of force and it is associated with the bad variable bad variables and this is known as the Langevin force and it is denoted by the symbol xi of t and it is called Langevin noise it is called Langevin noise or uh, it is called Langevin force also Langevin force and it arise completely due to the uh, surrounding and therefore under this simplification of this notation we can further simplify this equation and we can write it as m q double dot plus m omega m square q plus m integration 0 to t dt dash gamma i will define what this guy is t minus t dash q dot t dash is equal to xi of t and this is what we have as the so-called classical Langevin equation and this is very important and we will see a lot of application of it very soon and here this guy gamma t it is a uh, time dependent function it is called a memory function it is termed as memory function and it is basically uh, shorthand notation of this particular term here okay let me write here gamma of t is equal to 1 by m summation i is equal to 1 to n we have ci square divided by m i omega i okay and we have here cos omega i uh, t and this is termed as the memory function okay this is a it's a memory function and i will talk about it all later and it's termed as langevin noise or langevin force let me stop here for today in this lecture we have discussed optomechanical cooling and optical spring effect using classical picture then we started discussing classical noise because uh, quantum noise distinguishes the classical regime and to appreciate quantum noise better we have to first understand classical noise and to do that we have uh, derived the so-called classical Langevin equation in the next lecture we'll uh, discuss quantum Langevin equation so see you in the next lecture thank you